if you if you travel to Shrewsbury by train, uh, immediately behind you and, and well, sort of above you, you will notice Shrewsbury Castle, which dominates that part of the town. Now, the actual building is um, well; it was restored by Thomas Telford uh, with red sandstone brick. Um, when would that be? Um, somewhere around 1870. So it doesn't really look like much of a medieval castle, but it is. Uh, the original castle was, was built by, by William the Conqueror in 1067, um, but it was extended later by Roger de Montgomery in 1070 as a base for operations into Wales. And, you know, th this really is the basis of, of the importance of both Shrewsbury as a town, you know, of fortifying the Welsh border, uh, but also probably why Shrewsbury is seen as, you know, the most haunted or mystical towns of England, because we are so dangerously close to these unfathomable cults. Um, now, that having been said, Llewellyn... The Prince of Wales did actually hold the Shrewsbury Castle for a while in 1215. It, it was, of course, a centre for the parliamentarian forces. Uh, uh, sorry, for, for the Royalist forces during the Civil War. Um, but was later taken by the parliamentarians and held by the parliamentarians. Um, now, there is... There is a ghost story related to it, which I actually thought was related to not just an occupant, but the sort of lord of the manor. But as I've researched it, this story of bloody or bloody Jack, um, he was only a he was only a soldier that was stationed there um, in the twelfth century. Now, now I have to say, you know, I always grew up. To believing that it was sort of the lord of the manor as it were or something like that so whilst I can't find any anything that confirms my view I still need to sort of state that anyway he, he, he well no I was going to say a womanizer he, he wasn't I mean he, he was a serial killer bloody jack and he had a chamber there and he, he used to speak to the local girls um particularly apparently virgins, and gain their trust, and he'd invite them back to his quarters in the castle, where he'd rape and murder them. Um, and he used to collect trophies from his victims, particularly their fingers, uh, but he'd remote, r dispose of their remains by feeding them to the pigs kept at the castle or throwing them in the nearby uh, River Severn. His eighth victim was a girl called Mary Ann, and um, she she went to his quarters, but she told her sister that she was going to his quarters, and his sister arrived just in time to see Jack dragging Mary Ann's corpse across the forecourt into the castle. Um, although she went from the scene, she returned a few days later and it was here that she found a wooden chest in his quarters and inside it she found these fingers, toes and trophies that Jack had collected from the murdered girls. Um, based on her testimony, uh, Jack was convicted of murder and he was hung, drawn and quartered at the Buttercross at the top of Pride Hill. Um, However, shortly... Oh, and, and his head was put on a spike um, somewhere near Wild Cop. Now, it wasn't long after his execution where his ghost was seen dragging a kicking and screaming Mary Ann across the sh courtyard of Shrewsbury Castle. And, you know, it's believed that he can still be seen to this day doing this. Now, as I say, that's not quite the story that I grew up with, but, you know, there seems to be, this seems to be the consensus of the truth.
when speaking of the ghosts of Shrewsbury, I well, not the starting point, but certainly one of the most important events in Shrewsbury that, that so many ghost stories come from was the Battle of Shrewsbury. Now, the Battle of Shrewsbury actually took place on what is now the northern edge of the town, a place called, surprisingly, Battlefield. Um, and it was, it was a part of the War of the Roses, or in particular, it was a part of the Glindua Rising. And it took place on the 22nd, 21st of July, 1403. And it was between an army led by the Lancastrian King Henry IV and a rebel army led by Henry Harry Hotspur Percy of Northumberland. Um, now, what's important about it is that the House of Percy had backed uh, Henry IV against Richard II, was it? Yeah, against Richard II of York. Um, but they grew increasingly, there was increasing disquiet with him. And so, uh, particularly John of Gaunt um, was active in, 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 in the descent. And they sort of joined with the Welsh revolt uh, by Owen Glendower. And there was also revolts against the Scots. So the Percy's, the Percy's um, drew an army from uh, lands in and around Cumbria and Northumberland and marched them down to Shrewsbury. It wasn't that big and in fact the, the greatest numbers that they found actually came from Cheshire. And the Cheshire were renowned long bow men. And indeed this was this was the first battle on English soil when longbows were used um, by both sides. But as I say, the Cheshire men were particularly good. And despite being completely outnumbered, uh, they, they very nearly won the battle. Now, the hope had been for Owen Lindua to, to um, come and support them, but Owen Lindua didn't know anything about it and was fighting in Carmarthenshire. So he didn't join them, but had he, they would have almost certainly have won. And now, um, what happened was that, you know, yeah, they, they'd killed many, many of the king's, king's soldiers. Uh, but in the end, Percy himself was killed. And once Percy was killed, that was, that was the mark for the end of the battle. Um, now, of course, the, the battlefield itself is said to have got many ghosts. And it, it certainly feels a, a highly auspicious place. To visit, um, but as I say, it's sort of the the it's sort of the impact that it's had on Shrewsbury, the folk life, and the the ghost stories around Shrewsbury that perhaps is even more important. Of course, this whole thing was was mentioned by Shakespeare in Henry the Fourth, Part One, although his is what he has to say isn't perhaps that accurate. Now, the body of uh, Hotspur was taken by his first cousin, Thomas Neville, who was the fifth Baron Furnival uh, at Whitchurch in Shropshire. Um, and he, he was buried there, but there were rumours that he hadn't actually died. So the king had him disinterred and his body was salted um, and set up in Shrewsbury, impaled on a spear, 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 spear between two mill millstones in the marketplace pillory with an armed guard. But he was later, it was later taken to York where he was, was he hung, drawn and quartered? Maybe he was, he was certainly quartered. And the quarters were put on display in Chester, London, Bristol and Newcastle. Uh, and his head, his head was impaled, impaled on York's north gate. Um, nevertheless, the rumour, I grew up with the belief that he'd actually been hung, drawn and quartered at the Buttercross in Shrewsbury. 
Now, some do say that it was the site of where um, uh, where Hotspur's body was after it had been salted was placed, but I, I'm not certain that's true. However, it certainly had been the site of executions, including hanging, drawing and quartering. Um, the most famous of which was uh, David the third, the last Prince of Wales, uh, from the House of Gwynedd. Um, the, the the cross is obviously quite a quite a, a, a quite a modern one, but it's believed there was there was a cross there since the twelfth or thirteenth century, and and certainly it's known that by the middle of the sixteenth century there was there were written records there was one there. And, and it was used um, not only for the for a bottom market, um, but also for for many local social gatherings. Now earlier I described Barracks Street, but I mean Barracks Passage. Another of these shuts or narrow passages that characterise characterise Shrewsbury, and in. 1485, Henry the 7th stayed in the town, en route to fighting Richard the 3rd at the Battle of Bosworth Field, which was the last significant battle of the War of the Roses, and many of his soldiers were billeted here. Now the legend has it that the soldiers who died in the battle uh, came back to Barracks Passage, which was apparently the last place where they were happy. Now, I've mentioned Barracks Passage, but at the front of Barracks Passage is Henry Tudor House. And this is a story, I, I suppose it's a bit between the two. Um, but people have seen, speak of what's known as a wraith, a sign of death in a female form, which lurks close to the entrance of Barracks Passage. Uh, she apparently has no eyes and a body that moves with the wind and it sends trembling shivers down your spine and if you do see such a sight you're told to move quickly. Now I've mentioned Prince Rupert in the uh, English Civil War and, and his association with Shrewsbury. He was, he was actually German, um, known as Prince Rupert of the Rhine, although Duke of Northumberland, uh, sorry. <coughs> and he lived from 17th of December 1619 to the 27th of December uh, 1682. Um, and he, he was a, well, he was a cavalry commander during the English Civil War. He was the third son of German Prince Frederick the uh, Fifth of Palatine, and Elizabeth, eldest daughter of King James the Sixth and, and first of Scotland and, and England. Uh, he had a varied career, or chequered, you might say. He was fought alongside the Dutch against Habsburg Spain during the Eighty war Years' War and against the Holy Roman Emperor in Germany during the Thirty-Year uh, 30 War. As I say, he became a Royalist Cavalry Commander during the English Civil War. Um, after the Civil War um, and after the fall of Brist Bristol, he served under the King of France, but then he became a uh, privateer, or, or what are they called? Pirate, pirate. Uh, in the Caribbean. Uh, following the restoration, he, he came back to England and uh, he was appointed as the first governor of the Hudson's Bay Company. Now, maybe this is just royalist propaganda, uh, but Prince Rupert was said to have got a familiar, a spirit dog, which was a white poodle that he carried with him into battle on his horse during the English Civil War. Uh, apparently it was named Boy. Um, and he, some suggested that he was even the devil in disguise. Certainly the, the sight of Boy on Prince Rupert's charger was said to send the parliamentarians into complete disarray. 
Um, he was meant to be able to catch bullets in his mouth and a boy became the mascot uh, of the Royalist Army and he even was awarded the rank of Sergeant Major General. Um, he, he supposedly had other endearing attributes, for example, cocking his leg when he heard the name of John Pym, leader of the Parliamentarian Forces. Uh, he supposedly performed for Charles I, slept under Prince Rupert's bed and played with Princess Charles, James, Harry and Princess Henrietta and was often fed roast beef and capon breasts by Charles I himself. Um, he died actually during the Battle of Marston Moor in 1644. Um, but, you know, his, his legacy lives on and he's recorded as the first official British Army dog. Shrewsbury was, was quite important during the English Civil War. Um, and indeed, there were many battles fought around Shropshire. It was seen as something of a strategic position. You see, Wales was largely royalist, and so Shropshire was the gateway to Wales. So immediately, um, the royalist garrisoned uh, Shrewsbury, in, largely in Shrewsbury Castle. Although, as you'll hear elsewhere, um, the, there was a garrison on Barracks, Barracks Lane. I think it's called Barracks Lane. I'll come to that later. Um, and um, so, yeah, the Royalist, but having said that, there was support for the parliamentarians across Shropshire. And indeed, Shropshire eventually, um, sorry, the, the king the, the king visited Shrewsbury and his, his uh, nephew, Prince Rupert, was very, very heavily associated with Shrewsbury. Um, but uh, Shrewsbury actually fell to the um, parliamentarians um, in, let's see, no, I, I'm, oh yeah, 16, 1645, and it's believed that it fell when some parliamentarian supporters allowed the uh, parliamentarian troops in through this gate by the river which is known as the water gate but also known locally as traitors gate enabling the parliamentarians to march on the nearby garrison at shrewsbury castle well yet again i find myself corrected in a uh, blog by Maggie Love, or Margaret Love, as I knew her when we were young. And she claims that uh, the parliamentarians would have had the, um, would have had the technology to build um, uh, ladders on boats on the river, enabling to, to scale the Nat Castle rolls. So probably the story of the Traitor's Gate is incorrect. She also added that the story was of uh, local parliamentarian supporter John Bembo, or General Bembo, having, having pointed out the Watergate or Traitor's Gate, but as she says, it's probably not true. Well, at the entrance to the castle is Castlegate's house, which is a timber building. And apparently these timber buildings were actually built so that they could be moved. So they were sort of prefab. And it was originally in Dogball before being moved to its current site. Before it was moved on the ground there, um, on, on the grounds where it is, after the parliamentarians took Shrewsbury during the English Civil War, um, they captured a number of royalists and they hanged some of them. 
<laughs> but it turns out that both sides, but I mean mostly the, the, the Irish were mostly fighting on behalf of the Crown, so were mostly Royalists. <laughs> but can you believe this? <laughs> The first people to hang, and maybe the only people to hang, were the Irish. <laughs> so the parliamentarians took all the Irish mercenaries and hung them on this patch of land. Um, I think there was particular animosity if they were Catholic, but yeah. I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. And if you have, can you help me out a little? Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell and then you'll be notified of future vlogs. But also hit the like button and make a comment. Uh, because these seem to be what determine the um, YouTube algorithm. And I I'm being really punished by it. So whatever help I can get from you is, is so appreciated. It really is. I'm... Uh, when I started this, I was going to do it uh, this, this section... The real magic of Java I was going to issue maybe t every two, three months. Now it's, it's happening maybe every two or three days. So yeah, if you hit the bell, you'll hear about it. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Really heartfelt thanks.